Welcome to Hope is Here. My name is Greg Horn. It is Food for Thought Friday. I'm so glad that you're with us. Uh, We took a break last week from Food for Thought Friday and uh, just glad to be back with you and just love to share nuggets of I like to think that they're wisdom, things that have spoke to me at least, and some wisdom that I needed, whether it's through my quiet time or reading God's Word, uh, whether it's a devotional book I'm reading, maybe it's through a conversation with somebody else, uh, maybe it's on social media or a podcast. Uh, just love how God loves to speak to His kids if we'll put ourselves in a place to do that. And the first thing I want to share with you today is... Uh, I saw somebody post this, had a picture of water pouring on a brick and it just bouncing off, or water pouring on a sponge. And on the visual of the water pouring on the brick, it said, are you listening to respond? Are you listening to understand, which had the water going into the sponge? So I know it's kind of hard, as I'm describing that, to visualize that, but obviously a sponge soaks up things. And a brick, it just water bounces off of it. And I have to admit, I've been guilty of not listening to understand. I'm listening, and at first I'm intentionally wanting to be a good listener, but then I think how I'm going to respond, and I can think of a story similar, and I think most of us never intentionally want to one-up somebody unless maybe sometimes our pride kicks in. And I've been there before, so I don't want to act like I've never done that, because I have, and bears to say that to you. But, um, but I also know that sometimes I'm not listening to understand I'm listening more to how I'm going to respond, even if it's just trying to share a similar situation. Sometimes I'm learning people just want to be heard. And I love in the book of James, James chapter 1, I believe it's verse 18 or maybe 19, says, Be quick to listen and slow to speak and slow to become angry. Well, obviously, friends, we want to be careful with any type of anger, uh, expressing it the way we do. It's okay to get angry. I mean, that's an emotion God's given us, but how we handle our anger is uh, concerning, and we want to make sure that uh, that's under uh, God's control, and that we're keeping things in control in our spirit and not giving into our flesh. But I think the art of listening is uh, just kind of lost, in all honesty, and we don't listen to uh, be heard. We listen to how we're going to respond and we don't hear people. And I want to encourage you to be a great listener. I love when there's Bible verses, and I need to do a word search again on those, but there's several Bible verses that say that if you go to God, He will listen. I believe it's in Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 11 through 14, where it talks about that, you know, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. And obviously, that's really, really powerful, that verse right there, because I love that in that one verse, it says not once, not twice, but three times that God has a plan for our life. I'll never forget about 20-something years ago, 22 years ago, I believe, to be exact, when I read that for the first time, and I noticed I shouldn't say the first time. It was the first time I'd noticed the word plants in there three times. I'd heard the verse, seen the verse several times. But like a lot of things in life, we just have to be in the right place at the right time and in God's timing. And it's I'm like, oh, my goodness, it's got the word plans in there three different times in just one verse. And I just got such excitement over that. And for somebody listening to that, you need to know that. That God has a plan for your one and only life. I also want to remind you, we have a YouTube channel. I know a lot of people like YouTube, and uh, a lot of our programs are on that. And I hope that you'll check it out. Some are just audio. Some do have a visual component. But uh, we would be blessed and honored if you would subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you've been blessed by our program, please share a comment. And uh, just that is a, another area of our ministry here at Hope is Here that is continuing to grow. And so thankful for that and all the hard work that Tammy Lanham puts in to uh, put that together. Verse 12, though, in Jeremiah chapter 29, uh, after verse 11 about the plants, in verse 12 it says, If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. And then verse 12 says, in those days when you pray, I will listen. I love that. 
In those days when you pray, I will listen, and if you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. But we're talking about listening today. So verse 12, when it says in those days when you pray, I will listen, is just uh, powerful, friends. When we pray, God listens. And so I pray that we can be better uh, listeners too. And I love the verse 14 in Jeremiah 29, chapter 29, because it talks about verse 13. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. And then in verse 14 it says, I will be found by you, says the Lord. And God will find us, friends. We may not feel like anybody else knows where we're at today, but I want to encourage you and let you know that there is always hope because of Jesus And I'm so thankful for the hope that he's brought into my life and so many others. And hope that you will trust him today, even though you may be in a challenging situation. I love Romans chapter 15, verse 13. It says, I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, friends, I'm so, so thankful for that. You want to have hope today? Well, first of all, recognize and be reminded that God is your source of hope, okay? And it says he will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. And we talked about this on Monday, but we walk by faith, friends, and not by sight. And sometimes we have to choose to have joy, and, and God will give us peace because we trust in him, not our circumstances, not our feelings, not how much money's in our bank account, not matter whether we're married, single, uh, no matter what kind of car we drive, no matter where we live, okay? God's like, hey, I am your source of hope, and I can fill you with joy and peace when you trust in me. But I love that God's such a God of details. It goes on to say in verse 13 of Romans chapter 15, then you overflow with confident hope. Not just, it always says we're going to have hope at the beginning of the verse, but then it says, hey, I just want to let you know, you know what, you can have confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's something we don't talk a lot about in church. I didn't hear hardly anything mentioned about the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost, as it's called in the King James Version of the Bible. And yet, friends, that is part of the Trinity that, You know, it's really just a hidden treasure, a hidden blessing. Jesus said he would leave a comforter and a counselor. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. Friends, I want to encourage you to rely and ask the Holy Spirit to be a part of your life and to help you and to guide you. And friends, God loves to bless his kids. He's a good, good father. He's a generous father. I pray that you would stand on that today in his promises. I like this quote by C.S. Lewis. It says, I pray because I can't help myself. I pray because I'm helpless. I pray because the need flows out of me all the time, waking and sleeping. It doesn't change God. It changes me. And so, friends, out of that saying, you know, friends, that's why we pray. God definitely hears it. But you know what? The bigger thing is it changes us. It changes us, friends, and I'm so thankful for that time when I pray. And I love the simple acronym that I felt like God gave me one day. Uh, You know I love acronyms. If you listen over here, pray, P-R-A-Y, P, pause. In other words, just be still for a moment, okay? Turn the TV off, turn the music off, turn your radio off, your iPhone, your whatever type of phone, you have and just pause and do Psalm 46 10 be still and know that he is God let our reflect just kind of reflect on what's going on sometimes friends uh, something on a scale of 1 to 10 that I'm making a 10 because maybe I'm tired maybe I'm hungry okay um, you know becomes a 10 when maybe really, and oh, honestly, it's only about a five, maybe a six at most, sometimes even a three or four. And sometimes we just got to say, you know, okay, I don't like that, but maybe I'm making a mountain out of a molehill, as the old saying goes. <laughs> 
And when we reflect, sometimes God shows us just, you know, I had a friend one time, they used to tell me when I kind of get worked up about something, they'd just say, breathe, Greg, breathe. <laughs> and it's amazing when you inhale, then exhale, a big breath like that, you do that three or four times when you're really worked up, and it really does help settle your heart rate down. And friends, it keeps us sometimes from saying something we might regret. Have you ever said something out of emotion to someone because you're hurting and then later regretted it? Yeah, we've all been there, friends. And that's why James chapter 1, verse 19 says, Be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. And sometimes that involves being a better listener, which we've talked about earlier, but also just saying, you know what, I don't want to get angry. I'm going to be slow to speak. And sometimes, uh, you know, wisdom is just to say, hey, you know, I can't really respond right now because I am a little worked up about this, and I don't want to say anything that I would regret. And sometimes people will push your button and say, oh, come on, come on. And if you know that you're going to be tempted to say something you might regret or out of anger, friends, it's best to say, no, I just need to take a break. Just like sometimes uh, the little kids, we have to put them in timeout to let them reevaluate. Sometimes we need a cool down period and a chance to reevaluate or reflect as I'm talking about here in my prayer acronym. So after you've paused, after you've reflected, then the letter A, then you do ask God. Ask God to help you. Uh, Bear your burden. Share with him. First Peter chapter 5, verse 7 says, Cast all your burdens upon the Lord because he cares for you. And friends, that's just such a blessing to know that the very one that gave you and I breath today says, Hey, cast your burdens on me because I care for you. Friends, what a blessing as a follower of Jesus to know that today. And then last but not least, the letter Y, yield. You know, friends, sometimes when we pray and ask God things after we've reflected too, um, you know, sometimes he asks us to do things that we don't really want to do. But, friends, I want to encourage you to be obedient today to that. And another thing, sometimes when God, when you yield to what God asks you to do, sometimes it's not to do anything. <laughs> I'm laughing because my type A personality, man, I want to get things done. I've got my list. I want to make things happen. And I've got a schedule, a deadline. And, you know, sometimes we do have to press through and do things, friends. There are seasons for that. But there's often, often seasons sometimes where God's just saying, you know, wait. I want you to wait because I'm working in somebody else's life right now, and you may not be able to comprehend it, but just trust me, I'm working behind the scenes in somebody else's life, and I know you might be ready, but they're not ready. And so, friends, be encouraged today to know that sometimes while we're having to wait, what the delay is is because God is working in somebody else's life, and that's why he hasn't been able to do anything Yes. I love Psalm 27, verse 14. It says, wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. I love that it bookends the first part of that verse and the last part by saying, be brave and courageous. Sometimes to wait, friends, we have to be brave and courageous. So I want to encourage you to do that. Wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. I'm Greg Horn, and this is Hope is here.